defense out here. I could even feel yesterday just how looks can feel a little more muddy and you're not quite sure personnel wise what you're getting. And so that's, I think that's a good thing to kind of be uncomfortable that way. And um, it's why these days are really important for us to get a lot out of them. Maybe, maybe we need to feel more uncomfortable on this show as well. Maybe that would get us that. <laughs> We're, we have a new look tonight. Elusive Emmy. Welcome back to another edition of Enough Said. My name's Dan Barrero, joined as uh, always by Justin Gard. And as we uh, mentioned to you last week, Lori Fisher taking yet another week out. Unbelievable. Off. And Natalie Brenninger, kind enough to uh, fill in as she often and very capably does. Hi, Natalie. Hi, you guys. Thanks for having me back. Sure, Lori of deserves the time off. Okay, well, you have to say that. <laughs> I know, that. she's your boss. It's fine. Just I, make sure, I believe it. Make sure everything's clean by Get the time she comes back. Get all the cleaning done, yeah, the sanitizing. That's important. That's I important. already did it. I got a gold star. That's Excellent. good. That's good. <laughs> all right, well, the Vikings and Titans face each other at U.S. Bank Stadium this weekend after joint practices this week. And as you saw in that video there, things got a little feisty with some pushing and shoving at times. And when our cameras were not allowed, one Titans player <laughs> was ejected for throwing a punch at Viking center Garrett Bradbury. So we'll see how things go on Saturday. Well, it's interesting, uh, Natalie, you bring up uh, Bradbury's name because one of the, the viral pieces of video that has somehow escaped from uh, that joint practice session is a Tennessee Titan defensive lineman just abusing Garrett Bradbury, yeah. almost as if he's not there. Right. And look, uh, it's one play. It's one joint practice. Um, we all look for morsels. I don't want to overreact to it. But when it's a part of the team that – looked vulnerable last year and the year before that and people were concerned about coming into this season that's the interior part of the club's offensive line that to me is still you know the biggest question your guy Kirk has impressed people via the Netflix quarterback series yeah showing his toughness how many times he got hit and how, how many times he felt really bad but continued to play through it Sooner or later, your guy, Kirk Cousins, Justin, is probably going to get hurt yeah. if they don't do a better job of, of protecting him. And I think that really is still one of the open questions going into this season. Not the tackle so much as we know, but whether the interior part, as we saw even in that last playoff game, uh, will, will collapse enough to make life rather miserable for your favorite QB. So much so that they were still bringing in offensive linemen a week and change ago, right, to try to fortify yes. the guard position. So I do agree with you. Is there anything more cliche, though, than this time of year, the training camp fights? I mean, it's a, it's a it tale is. as old as time, isn't it? And every, every single time the coaches will say, we're bringing in this team, and let's just take the Titans, for example. I know Vrabes, uh, Mike Vrabel, I was on staff with him or I was on a team with him in New England. We're about the same things. We're about the same stuff, and we're not going to let any of that stuff go. And the Vikings, this was pretty tame, all things considered, right? The New York Jets canceled their second joint practice with, I believe, the Bucks because of some skirmishes, and they were worried about some things. So it's, um, I guess it tells you that the season is, is getting closer and closer because we're having those same conversations. What worries me is, for a second straight year, we're dealing with injuries with the draft picks. Yeah. Jordan Addison now misses some time. He's in concussion protocol. After missing all the offseason. Yeah, I mean, we've chronicled his, you know, the ups and downs with yep. him, first of all, being injured, then the speeding thing, and now concussion protocol, which is obviously serious. You can't, there's a reason why he's in there. You can't mess around with that stuff. But the third round pick, the corner, Blackman now got hurt on yeah. Thursday as well. And if that continues, you're talking about, we know what happened last year, right, with Andrew Booth and with Lewis Seen. A couple of draft classes back to back just getting washed out. So hopefully those guys are ready to go for the opener because 30. we still don't really know what kind of drafter Quasi Adolfo Mensa is, correct? No. We have not been able to assign a grade mostly because guys have just not been available. By the way, Deion Sanders, as I understand, was bitter. More of his players didn't get into a fight or participate in a, in a, in a training camp fight. Oh, really? At Colorado? Yeah. So I wonder did, did our coach react the same way? That's. Like, that's, that's to me, that's such a stupid, speaking of yes. cliche, coaching cliches, it is. that if you really show me you care, you're going to get in on that fight and get Outside. and be a part of it. Uh, I'll give you four quick names. Yep. Blackman, all, you know, young players, draft players, picks last year. Blackman, Addison, Ingram, and Evans all need to contribute significantly this year. if this team is going to go anywhere this yes. year. And a couple of them have looked promising when they haven't been hurt, but they are needed, and that is where – the, the new GM is on the clock. Enough said. Well, the Twins are still on top of the standings in the AL Central, but it's been a roller coaster of a week, splitting the series with the Tigers, and the Pittsburgh Pirates are up next. Kind of feels like the last time I filled in. <laughs> <laughs> 
We talked before the show, Dan, and Natalie said, what do we say about the Twins? And I said, what did you say last time? Because that's what we say every week, right? It seems like a broken record, and they'll have a really nice series. They'll have some real promising results. They've got great pitching. We know that. They, 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 they finished that out nicely in the last week. And then they go, and they just have, you know, just like a weird two-game stretch against the Tigers, that, you know, one of the bottom dwellers in the American League. And you're still just kind of left with the same discussion of, if they can get into the playoffs, which seems unavoidable because you've got, what, five and a half weeks now left in the regular That's season it. and they're three or four games up and no one else is trying four to win. Four and a half up. Um, it's just, it's been a really interesting year that way. And when you're already thinking about the young hitters being the positive parts of the offense, the offense, as we say on the radio, then you kind of know the season has not gone the way that it was intended to. When we were barely talking about Byron Buxton, manager even said earlier this week that his return is not imminent. We've only talked about Carlos Correa when it comes to his struggles. It's the Matt Walners of the world and the Kirloffs of the world and Royce Lewis's of the world now that he's back that you look at and say, okay, well, maybe those are the guys that if they do get into the postseason, those might be the guys that have to carry you a little bit. But that's a lot to ask from from the younger kids on this team. Well, and, and to the regarding the team's longer term future, it actually might be promising to, to, sure. to say it looks like they are assembling some interesting hitters, uh, young hitters, interesting everyday player pieces. Although we were talking about injuries with the Vikings. Injuries have reared their head a few times, way too many times for the Twins as well. So I don't yep. even know what you count on. Including with you, Lewis, by the way. You don't count on. That's exactly and right. And Kirilov, yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, we, we've, we've had a big discussion this week on the radio about a uh, Star Tribune column that seemed to, or well, didn't seem to, um, lectured Scold. and scolded and hammered Twins fans 30. for allegedly not feeling, not appreciating this team enough given the position they're in, which is they're going to win the division. <laughs> and I just, I guess I'm befuddled by it because, as you say, the record's the record. There are five teams vying for wild card spots in the league that have better records than the Twins do. Several of those have much better records than the Twins. And we know occasionally a team in a bad, divi bad division uh, gets in and also makes a bit of a run. But the level of inconsistency here leaves people confused they're not sure and that playoff history which is historically bad going back to 2004 straight, going back two decades is the elephant in the room too so if fans aren't flocking and aren't ready to say god i just this love watching this team yeah. please i mean I, I i i think that's we don't need that level of patronization natalie what were you doing in 2004 I was in high school. There you go. Yeah. That's the last time the Twins all. won a playoff game. A game, a game. not a series. Not a series. I got, I got to game. miss school one day to go to a game. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on. The former offensive lineman who inspired the 2009 movie The Blind Side, ex-NFL star Michael Orr, claims the family that took him in as a teenager, the Tuies, tricked him into a conservatorship and used the deal to earn millions from the movie. Orr says he just learned about the conservatorship, but the Tuies lawyers say that he acknowledged it back in 2011 in a book, and the family never controlled his finances. Dan? It's, a, uh, it, it's, it's becoming, in some ways, I think, a more difficult, unless you've decided <laughs> on the front end that, you know, you're taking one side or the other, right. and it doesn't matter what evidence, <clears throat> you know, it comes forward from there. I think it's becoming more confusing by the day in, in large measure, I, let me back up, first of all, and say, we shouldn't be shocked in general when Hollywood, even before this controversy, takes a story that might have a kernel of truth to it, yep. and they play with it, and they mash it, and they mold it, and they oversimplify it to make bigger statements, whatever, because we tend to like those oversimplified statements. And to make it into a great movie that everybody feels great about it, it, exactly and the lead wins an Oscar for. All of that, by the way, doesn't mean that Sandra Bullock should have to give back her Oscar, one of the right. most preposterous it's, accusations that have been made. Tim McGraw should apologize, too. You know, JFK, the movie, is filled with demonstrable lies and a series of conspiracy theories embroidered into one big one but on the other hand, it was a hell of a movie. In yeah. that it's really good filmmaking. That so courtroom we can't scene's that compelling. Yeah, yeah, exactly it. So look, I've said on the front end, this is these are these are really disturbing allegations for sure. But I have, I, like a lot of people, I think if you're trying to play this straight, a bunch of questions that I need answered before I'm ready to say 
that it ends up being as bad as the original accusations. I don't know where you are. Well, let's go back. Let's go to another movie. Let's go to All the President's Men, which is Watergate. What does Deep Throat say? Follow the money. That's essentially what we're going to have to do in this case, That's right? It. Because 100%. It, do, it does seem to be all about the money. Who got what, when, what the understanding was, when they were going to get that money, who was responsible for cutting the deals to get that money. The one issue, as we learn more about this story, well, there's multiple issues, obviously, because there's still so many unanswered questions. But Natalie pointed it out in the open. That, I think, is going to be tricky for Michael Orr when, in his own book, he talks about this arrangement that goes back 12 years. Yes. Now, do we, will we find out that he, that was written, also written in concert with the other attorney that was helping him out, that maybe he worded it a certain way? I don't know. But it, and, and the group texts that have come out here recently. You know what's going to be? Family. The indictment alleges that rather than abide, abide by Georgia's legal process for election challenges, the defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. Well, former President Donald Trump and 18 of his allies now facing charges in Georgia. A grand jury indicted the former president on charges related to alleged efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. The charges include felony racketeering and numerous conspiracy charges. Trump denies any wrongdoing and says that this case is politically motivated. Well, in fact, I think early this week, is it Monday? He's going to have a presser. Uh, Did you hear the update on that? No, did he change his mind? Predictably, that's been uh, he's canceling that ah. on because I was thinking all week that doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I bet he cancels that, and I guess his attorneys stepped in is what he's saying. Yeah, my attorneys advised me it's probably not the right thing to do. I I, I didn't think that would stop him because he's <laughs> because he's mind. got he evidence that the election was stolen. That was right? going to be that's it. what yeah. he was going well, to. Let unveil. me give you some but analytics. This is from a, a an attorney, a licensed practicing attorney who writes for a righty uh, magazine and, and website on several claims. Claim one, this is of course claims that Trump and his bobos have, have laid out over a period of time. 2,056 felons voted in the Georgia election 2020. Reality, four actual cases were found where felons voted and charges were filed. Claim two, 66,248 people under 18 voted in Georgia. Reality, zero people mm. under 18 voted in Georgia in 2020. Claim three, 2,423 people who were not registered voted in Georgia. Actual number zero, and I'll give you one more. <laughs> um, claim number five, 10,315 people who passed away voted in 2020 in Georgia. Reality, four such cases. And this can all be vetted and has been vetted. It doesn't matter to the people right. who are going to continue to live with the delusion, but um, that's the sad reality that we're in here. Whether any of this makes the case itself winnable, I need greater legal minds than you and I are, I right. think, to understand it because it's hard to keep you know, track of all the cases against him now without a scorecard in terms of which is the most winnable, which is the easiest to prove in court. My understanding of the distinction that matters in this one is though, uh, he can't be pardoned, as in he can't even pardon himself. Right. Uh, there are legal questions of whether that would have been possible, but knowing Donald J. Trump, if he had the opportunity, you know and I know he would have tried. Well, and we don't know if it's possible because we've never had to ask that question. Correct. Right? How many, how many what president was he? 45? And 45 yes, presidents, yes. I don't think we've really 30. ever had to answer that question. I know well, he had, had some tricky moments with Nixon, but. Yeah, yeah. but he eventually stepped away. Right. And, and we, know, we all know why. We just referenced that movie in the first segment of the show. 11.5 million documents I read today in this case, which is essentially, if you stacked them all up, the, uh, the, the equivalent to nine Washington monuments, I believe. Enough That's said. how much evidence is going through here. I've also heard, by the way, this week, you know, when's enough going to be enough for Trump supporters? Isn't there a line? We know the point? answer to that. Three years ago, four years ago, we knew the line for that. The New York Times did a whole thing. Like, will this be enough? No, and and no. they lay it out point by point, just like you. And what did you say at the end of all the claims? It doesn't matter. Except, no, none of this matters. I think the hope is, though, among, again, swing voters, right. it will. That's the distinction. But then you got the wild card of the sitting president and some issues there. And you no go, question. All bets are off, man. We Which is why it's not know. preposterous that he can't get no. the nomination and win again. And absolutely win again. By the way, the other smart thing the conspiracy theorists do, you notice all those numbers I quoted? They weren't round numbers. So it sounds more impressive. Like there's 10,236. You go, oh, that sounds like that's a real number. Right. It's not a real number. It's an invented one.
Okay, the devastation continues in Maui now. More than 100 people are now confirmed dead. And that number is expected to rise as hundreds of people are still unaccounted for. More than 2,200 buildings have been damaged or destroyed by the fire, the majority of them homes. Officials there defending their choice not to sound the sirens, saying they're for tsunamis and residents might have gone toward danger, but the emergency services chief did resign Thursday night. It's, um, the, 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 this is a, a perfect storm of, uh, you know, natural forces that are very, very difficult and sometimes even maybe impossible to control and what looks like some really horrendous decision making on the ground that also yep. might have, if they've been made better, mitigated a circumstance. The, the scariest thing I heard, Justin, most recently is concern that the number is going to go up about the number of children. Yes. Who, who perished in this deal because that day they were supposed to be going to school and didn't because I believe of a power failure that had already developed. Right. And so a lot of parents who don't have an option, uh, they still went to work, they left their children at home. Many of those houses have still not been checked in right. terms of the final body count, which is a horrendous thing to think about. Um, even the person in charge of, man of, 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 of uh, the the management preparedness, the reaction thing. He had no history, none, other than political interest. With the, I think working for the mayor or somebody else in position of authority in terms of doing this particular job. So it's it, the more we we learn, I think the more uh, uh, embarrassing and frightening it's going to be. Yeah, and it's it's obviously always easy to second guess. Yes, but that's kind of the point, right? I mean, you you, you want to think that you have the right people in place that have been through the right situations, they mentioned that he had done some trainings, right? And okay, everybody, as Mike Tyson said, everybody's got a plan until you get hit. You can go through all the trainings you want, but if you've never had to respond to something like this, and there haven't been a lot of things no. like this in fairness to them, but the defense Ready? on the sirens that, well, we have different systems for when it's something like this, when it's a wildfire or we send, but if those things are not working, which if you listen to people that were actually there and living there, including the text messages and the calls that, that we all get when there's a snow emergency here in Minnesota, your phone rings and it says, hey, there's a snow emergency, you can't park. That wasn't working either. So if you have a system in place that doesn't work, then you've got nothing. And so to defend it by saying if we did the sirens, they would have thought it was something different. They needed to think something because too many people in all the in the footage that we've seen have said we got nothing. We got no warning. We got no direction. We had no, you know, I guess help to get us where we needed to go. Money which is absolutely trash. Money's also, though, practically speaking, a part of this. They they knew that there were certain things they had to do about power lines to mitigate potential catastrophes like this but it costs money to do it. Right. They didn't get approval for the money or that was still in, in, in part of the process. And that's where the bureaucracy comes in. And that's where sometimes there's not you know, enough money for everything. Because the belief now is a down power line may have had as much to do with any as with anything one of them. Yeah. with moving that brush fire into a place where the shelter in place warning, which was another mistake, went came way, uh, stayed way too late and that made a lot of people stay in place as opposed to get out when they might have had a chance to escape. More than 2 million rebate checks are going out to Minnesotans right now. For many, it'll come soon through direct deposit if the state has one on file from your 2021 taxes. If not, you may see a check in the mail. So this is something Governor Walls had promised. Kind of. <laughs> kind of, right? I mean, what is it, about 25% Dan of what he originally promised? And, and, and I don't know to all the same people, right? I was yeah. going back and refreshing, no, not to all the same people refreshing mm -hmm. myself on what the original promises were. And obviously there was, you know, some in the thousands and, and the income thresholds. And yes. you know, you're left with, uh, you know, a couple of hundred bucks. And I don't want to you know, diminish that. But I also kind of wonder, even for the lowest, you know, income levels that we're talking about here, how far does that really go? And is it better served? As we always say with one of these things, are you better served using all of this money that's going out to a bunch of different places, doing different things with it that might have a more long lasting impact on certain things? I know certainly that's part of the reason why the money is as little as it, as it was supposed to be because Republicans a year ago were saying, rather than do this bulk thing, why don't we try to give some ongoing stuff in terms of tax cuts, different programs, all of that. But you can't be surprised when you promise a big number or a bigger number, and this is what you're left with, that people are kind of wondering, what's the point of all of it? A, a, a cynic would suggest that when he put out the grandiose figures, the larger numbers back in the campaign, he knew full well that he wasn't going to be able to do it, or he wasn't going to get the legislative approval to right. get it done, which is ultimately what took place. Correct. And yet, 
everybody's supposed to forget that later, and he can say, hey, I, I did what I, I could. I did what I the, could. The damn legislature got, uh, got in the way. So I don't think anybody should feel all that whole as a result of this. All right, time for lightning round. Former Vikings running back Dalvin Cook has found a team. He signed a one-year deal with the New York Jets worth about $8.6 million. As we all know, he spent six seasons with the Vikings before being released earlier this year. He is, I think, still got a lot in, in the tank. I yes. think he is. Especially a, if he's healthy. Uh, and, you know, I do believe by the notion that when you're a veteran guy who feels maybe a little bit more rejected than he thinks he should have been, even though we understand the finances of it, that there might be a little extra bounce in his step. He gets to play with a former enemy, A. Raj. Yeah. Uh, the good news is, about. if yeah. he dominates, he's dominating. You know, in the uh, in the other conference. Yeah, I've got right. no beef with the Jets. You know, the Jets can do whatever. Had he gone to Green Bay or something, yes. I probably would have been annoyed. This is fine. This he, is. He can still help a team. Absolutely. Absolutely, especially if he had the surgery that was bothering him for yeah, a couple of seasons, right. which I still don't quite understand what the delay was. If you needed surgery why he didn't get it, which he did, I think, this last offseason for that shoulder. So, yeah, he was good for the Vikings. Best of luck to him. Well, the Women's World Cup final is this weekend with Spain facing England. You can watch it right here on Fox 9. And this week, the coach of the U.S. Women's National Team actually resigned the team coming off that disappointing exit from the World Cup in wow. the round of 16. And, we're, and like I said last week, we're still doing the games, even though the United States isn't in it. That's big of us. That's big <laughs> of us as a country. That's big of us as Fox. But that shows you um, how big poorly the thing went the tournament's not even over yet and the coach has decided to move on did right? you also see here's what this shows you how goofy this is apparently this the, the Spain coach has been hated the players have been trying to get rid of him for like a year and a half yeah and yet here they are here they are playing for the uh, you know for for the champion for the time crazy well a Malibu Barbie cafe is coming to the Mall of America I know you guys can't wait for this yeah it's gonna be a pop-up 1970 style cafe with a restaurant you can take a picture in a Barbie box or go roller skating but opening day hasn't been announced yet this will be beyond enormous now, I don't know how long <laughs> it'll be enormous is there yeah. any doubt in either of your minds oh it's huge this is gonna this is gonna play big time Barbie's taking over. It's going to be no, huge. No and doubt. Every night of the week, you can go to any movie theater, and the one right by our, our radio station, you walk, by the time we leave, there's all kinds of people still rolling around in pink, getting ready to go to the theater. And the, how long has the movie been out? About a month now, right? Yep. Almost. It's not slowing down. Are it's we going to see, down. are we going to end up with a, a Barbie superhero movie? You know, a combination of all the comic of. super yeah, that's it. things there are and Barbie. People would argue we already have. We already have. It's yeah. in theaters <laughs> sure. now. Yeah. All right, finally, it's almost time for the State Fair. The Great Minnesota Get Together starts next week. I can't wait. And of course, Enough Said's going to be there at the fair doing some tapings, right? We are hoping, yeah, for huge crowds. We need I think a crowd. We're taping a 12:30. We need a crowd. 12:30 each of the next two Fridays. Come and see us, man. We we need the uh, the juice and the energy that only a live crowd That's right. can uh, can give to us. And don't believe the forecast if they say rain, because we've been <laughs> we've fooled been on that enough before. Said. On enough said. Yeah. We'll let you know. Be there. 12:30, right by the giant slide. We can finally say the state fair is right around the corner. Think about and it. Actually, mean it. We can enough wear said. polos for the show. That's the other bonus. Are we getting them? Where we haven't got them in yet. I'm sure they're here. The new ones. I'm sure. We'll have to ask Lori. <laughs> Lori has them. I want a gold star from Lori. <laughs>